Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. My name is Steve Federal, <clears throat> Chief Market Analyst. Sounds all big title, right? Bottom line doesn't mean anything. I'm just a knucklehead trying to help you guys avoid lots of risk in the equity, Forex, and other markets that we trade. So let me do a favor here for everybody. I'm going to open up the Q&A window. Um, I get questions occasionally how I find red folder. You just uncheck these two. Look at the red folder events. Okay, so just look at the calendar here as I often will pull up. Keep in mind, this is on Pacific time here. Um, so, but this particular one is set to Pacific time. Yes, all right, cool. You can always change it around to whatever time, but it's like it's showing East Coast time. And then we're gonna take a look at, uh, let's see, the next week. So, four through the tenth. Make sure we apply the settings. No, old channel is going away. Thanks for that clarification on that, uh, Karina. Old channel is done. We don't have the control over it that we want. Primarily, myself as admin, um, in being able to monitor um, that type of control. We also were having a problem changing the logo, so we figured, hell, we'll just restart the whole thing. <laughs> Thanks to Bill and the team, as always, for their expertise, and certainly Susan and her team of designers put together a pretty cool logo, but the whole logo was getting a bit old with, you know, just Einstein and Alexander in there, so we wanted to have more modern with the changeover of all of our logos and so forth. All right, so April 4th through the 10th. I um, mean, obviously, bank holidays for the vast majority of countries, which was the case on Friday. Uh, note that some will celebrate the holiday um, on the following business day, so Monday. Okay. Great statement for those trading anything AUD, NZD, okay, on Monday. So do note that uh, FOMC meeting minutes will be released. This is typically um, an event that, and then Chairman Powell speaking, you know. He's been towing a particular line, uh, which I talk exhaustively about in my quarterly client review letter I'm working on. So I'll give you guys a peek into that um, when it's finished. But um, without just sort of belaboring the point I've been trying to make is that uh, the markets are a little concerned about the fact that too much stimulus has been dropped upon it. But when one looks at, and keep in mind employment change for Cat and Friday, but if we drop back to just the dollar's movement, let's take a look at that on a daily chart start. I mean, no surprise, you're looking, each one of these candles represents a single day, and it's just a movement of analysis. I like to look at daily charts. Um, a lot of the EAs are based on daily charts. You can certainly drill down to four hours and even smaller, but we take a look typically at daily and monthly here. Uh, but essentially, the charts... <clears throat> Dollar for now has bottomed. So at this point, you know, we had for the 89.40 area was essentially the bottom. Uh, this is a long term support area that more than likely should give way at some point going forward. Uh, and by the way, ask the questions if you guys could, please. And thanks for the questions building up here. Do it in the QA window. That'd be great. Not, not chat, unless you just want to announce something to everybody, which is cool. <clears throat> I like the fact, by the way, just as a side note, because I think this is a just it's additional risk mitigation stuff is the fact that, you know, all those channels um, that all the developers have put out in Telegram, um, you know, they all have an associated chat room with them, too. That's a separate channel. So I think that at the very least, someone should be subscribed to Avoria Prime Corporate, you know, should be subscribed to the 
um, developers channel, as well as the chat and myself. Okay, so at a minimum, these would be the four telegrams. Ideally, you'd want to subscribe to all of the developers' channels, the primary channel and their chat channel. Okay, you can turn all the notifications off if you just don't want your app dinging every second because these rooms are real active. But you know, just scrolling through this occasionally has really been pretty good for just scanning just a general overview of what's going on. A lot of good questions have been posted there. I know that the developers are trying to scan through and just, you know, but a lot of the participants in the room uh, have been answering these questions as well, which is good. So just try and stay away from any performance discussions and anything of the like. Um, do remember that resetting your VPS, and reboots and all of that uh, will continue to help update its software get loaded in and or let's see my camera looks like it's falling over here and or the um uh hang on one second you guys i gotta this is a ups guy at the front door no? expecting a whole bunch of tailor-made drivers sitting on the front porch um, all right, so <clears throat> dollar chart here. Take a look at uh, our corresponding majors. Euro US dollar, so this fell below. I consider this to be in trend down, so I'm going to kind of let you guys know when trend up and trend down is. <clears throat> okay, we're in trend down for now, at least on the daily chart. Um, looks to be somewhat basing on a four hour, just based on really not a lot happening, but. Ideally, this has been a pretty big move of the dollar up. Okay. A lot of people did not expect this. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, why are we even seeing any of this, which technically is a trend up, right? Since the bottom um, is very simply look at how much the dollar has fallen, almost a full $10. Um, and this is a pretty big hit off of the currency versus the high of the pandemic. Um, and this is mostly due to just the stimulus packages and the additional levels of debt we have brought into, unfortunately, our balance sheet. Euro GBP, same thing. We're stuck in a balance daily chart. Let's get a feel for that. This is tight little balance going on here. Euro JPY. Let me know if there's any specific currencies you guys want to see as well, because I'm going to sort of motor through these stuck inside of a balance area. Notice this 3050 area has been pretty strong at holding. A newly formed, um, this is a Dassan's fancy triple moving averages overlaid onto this trading view chart, holding us right there. So I think, you know, not necessarily um, looking to break out at this point. Could be wrong. GBP USD in a tight range. Okay. These lines have been holding well. So have the moving averages, including the 100 day line, which is the yellow. <clears throat> Um, CAD, let's take a look at GBP CAD real quick. Very, very big area down here at 72, all 7,200 area. This has been a big floor recently for this. I would expect that to hold, but it could be wrong. Um, USD JPY. And I'll go into CAD JPY next. This has been, I mean, no surprise, the strength of the dollar in relation to the yen has probably been a much more upward trajectory than even probably some of the best institutional research guys, um, including the uh, Crescat Capital guys that I use uh, for some of my reports. This has been, you know, nothing short of, you know, I'm not <clears throat> going to do here, but if I was to overlay Bollinger Bands, which are just a stretch rubber band type of indicator, or a Keltner channel, which is kind of the same thing, or any sort of standard deviation lines, I mean, we're up there, meaning that we are really stretched on a daily time frame, which, I mean, we literally came right out. And this is why you look at trend downs and trend ups, right? And, you know, this is something that until proven otherwise, um, I would be only trading this in a trending mode if the EA allows that adjustment. 
Okay. So I'm, I always try and just stick to generalities in terms of what currencies I would have offer on. Um, I do a very sort of glaze over analysis on this. So one thing I will suggest is that always let the developers recommendations, especially if it's a specific pair that is traded like Neo or Stratamus, um, you know, let their research on what the currency is doing in a more micro level far supersede than anything I talk about on a very, okay, so just sort of like take it with a grain of salt. I'm just my view on it, um, the fault of those guys, because they know the chart patterns, obviously more specifically, a heck of a lot more detail that I know in relation to the currency. So just a, just a risk caveat for there. But looking at, um, this has been bananas. So a lot of times you got to drop to weekly on this. Just reset the scale so we can see what we're kind of looking at. So as I had talked about many times before, the magnet of this um, is at this this whole 111.50-ish area, really anywhere, essentially between 111 and 112 on dollar yen. I would imagine it's going to be a magnetized or a big type of attractor area that once it hits this, then you got to start paying closer attention for uh, a potential sideways versus being in a trend up, you know, more than likely will balance. USD CAD, same thing, trend down. I don't really draw a lot of these lines because I want to get you guys and your eyes more into the mode of looking to see where the trend line is, right? So you, you can draw a downtrend line after the major spike on this. <clears throat> And I think the strange thing about this is the dollar has, um, you know, it's strengthened up against a lot of currencies. Man, I'll tell you, the Canadian dollar is so strong. And uh, take a look at CAD CHF, which I think we um, we just talked about. And then CAD JPY, again, going to show the strength. I don't think I have that on the list. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, again, you know, it's actually attained the area. It looks like it hit it last. Uh, let's double check that. So we're there daily. Yeah, so we've hit the last week we hit it. Notice we came back. And keep in mind, this is just a one week candle that we're looking at here. We hit this area, so we should probably should move from trend to a balancing. Just looking at the daily chart now, okay? Higher high, see these dojis that printed up here? It tells us that we may be pausing. And if we're pausing and we're not continuing the advance higher, the more likely we're gonna be just staying inside of balance. So you actually almost should see soon some support and resistance lines show up um, with our squeeze zone indicator which is just posting lines based on an algo it uses to run support and resistance. But technically these lines were already there. You can kind of see where they're stopping. So this would have me more in. <clears throat> the, the problem I would think for different software that continue to take shorts on this way up, this is why I'm a big advocator and I'm always on these. Um, and I actually had a, a call yesterday morning with uh, Dasan um, you know, just working on trying to have, you know, changing modes, if you will, of the software that are more optimized to make an automatic switch to a trending type of thing, in which case it's just buying pullbacks, right, versus fighting the freight train higher. So this is almost exclusively why the vast majority of people that are in drawdown is, one, they may not have had it in a trending mode, it may not have that mode to change it to, depending on the software. Um, but if it certainly does, you want to recognize that something's trending up or down um, and be in that mode, which you know really requires you to pay more attention to what's going on instead of having to just hope and pray that we have some large pullback, right? Canadian dollar has been strong, you know, for a whole host of reasons. Uh, USD can, I think I already talked about it. Let me just take a quick peek back at that. <clears throat> Uh, before we do that, let's take a look at USD CHF on the daily. Not much there. Move the weekly. Let's 
say this 96 area is the attractor. I do can see it, Jeff. I should have like a checklist. Here we go. Let's stick with the daily first. Yeah, same thing. Would not have been fighting this trend as I've talked about the last couple of weeks. Let's take a look at the weekly. On well, CAD CHF, this is the big area up here that's probably going to attract us. I don't know when, I don't know how fast. More than likely, the testing of a big area is what I call a zipper up into an area, which we've technically already zippered up into, right? We spent a fair amount of time basics. I mean, even if one didn't understand the charts, I would always say that you could probably draw a line just like that. As soon as we broke out of this range, you know, ideally this line would be down here as, as a smaller range. But as soon as we broke out of this tighter range, we'd be in a trending mode. So just get yourself in the habit of looking at, you know, the tight little base that we were sort of bounced between those areas and then we broke out. That's when you'd want to be in a trend up mode. All right, so different. Let me know if I'm forgetting anything because I'm deleting these as I go forward. Make sure you're good, uh, if you guys could too, please. A lot of people don't check the back office. A lot of people don't check their emails or stuff like that. And many of them are just disconnected from their teams, which still blows me away. Um, but make sure you get in touch with all the guys in your team or send like a blast text out. There's actually this really good program out there called Easy Text. You can just Google it. You put all the guys in your up and down line in there and then just blast text out to everybody with a link to the new channel would be the smartest way to do it. Gold for the question I just got on it. This is a weekly chart on gold. See how this long-term area has held. We've bounced off it. So if you just look at the last couple of days, we're coming back up towards it. If you break above this, let me just go to spot so it's easier to understand. But if you're looking at, if we break above 1750, we're going to see this 1850 area pretty quick. Daily chart. Uh, question is, can you explain trending versus sideways? So if you can follow along right here with my cursor on the screen, this is a sideways market. It's balancing between two tight or fairly broad um, in terms of price, but a tighter range that it's moving across, right? Whereas in this particular case, it's trending up. So candles and the price is moving up, or in this case, you could even draw a line, all this being somewhat sloppy here on gold. Let me just draw a line though. This is trending down. Lines don't have to be perfect. You can always adjust them around, but this is an example of a trending down market. You want to, rec you want to be able to recognize that because very simply, win rates and risk is lower. Win rates are higher, risk is lower when you take trades with the trend. So if the market's coming back up against this line, you have a much, much, and this is statistically significant statement I'm about to make historically for any anything i don't care if it's prices of houses art classic cars and mika auto auctions or you know any of that stuff or pricings of commodities in this case it's currents all right it's a it's a precious metal in u.s dollar terms um anything that is trending it is much easier to trade with the trend so if the trend's down it's much easier to take shorts when it comes back up against the line or close to that line right than it is to fight the opposite side of the freight train. It's a difference. But if you want a textbook definition of it, um, you can just go Google it. So the next question, which is a dovetail of the previous one, Alice. So if you're using variable, I'm just using VB, if you're asking me about variable. Because there's there is less risk and the software will adjust to the trend in a perfect world yes <laughs> doesn't always mean you're going to be on the right side of the trend right so uh merrick asks about the broker question um i have and you don't have to search through the videos but everybody do yourselves a favor and google 
A book versus B book broker, okay? Um, you're really looking for a broker that is what's called a straight through processor, right? And there's a lot of hybrid firms out there. We as a firm, um, albeit we're toying with the idea of being able to make recommendations to brokers as of now we are not okay and most of that is just based on liability if we recommend a broker and they go poof um, a lot of people are going to flip out and come back and blame it on us right which has nothing to do with us so you know i can't see inside your brokerage accounts i can only tell you what type of brokers to look for now keep in mind there are a, a bunch globally the list is small but there are a bunch globally that are mostly just STP or electronic processor A book type brokers. They'll tell you that they may do some B booking or they're like, hey, we're a hybrid. Uh, but there are ones out there that are just processing trades. They're not gaming against your EA. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about this exhaustively um, on the April 24th event when we're all in Tennessee broadcasting live globally. But um, I think it's it really is that simple. And I don't have the EA uh, or the MT4 platform open. It's on my other trading system. Um, but I would I used to go in and show kind of how I did it. But there's ways to see if your broker's gaming against you. Just go into the EA. Um, and I have specific directions on that. You know, and I'll tell you, actually, this brings up a really good point. Um, all of that content that's on the previous... Damn, I just thought of this. All the content that's on this previous Market Watch channel, I wonder if there's a way I can migrate this over. So this is the current channel. And I always recommend, because a lot of these questions can be answered by just literally going through the library of my old channel, right? So here, I'll show you this. You go into the Market Watch, you can see the photos and the files that are shared for any channel. So in this case, with the old channel, I've got a lot of old charts and stuff, and there's really important stuff in here, especially these candlestick patterns. There's a whole bunch of pictures I did on this. And I think this would be, let me see if I can go this way. Yeah, maybe I can move these over to the new channel. Hell, maybe they can migrate all the information over to the new channel. So I'll make a note to try and get that done. Uh, but do ask, Merrick, I promise you, the bigger, big guys in your upline, they're going to know what broker to deal with. I promise you on that. Yeah, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Bitcoin. Been a lot of negative press coming out on this, um, but I don't have a prognostication. GBP, NZD, hold and real tight. Again, daily. US dollar, CHF. <clears throat> um, let's take a little closer look at this because I want to revisit this again. This one's been real murky as far as me understanding what's going on. I and mean, obviously, we've been in trend up. This is a weekly chart. I mean, hell, your trending software on this currency pair could have been running for months, right? Uh, or at least the last two months since we're looking at weekly charts. I don't see, I don't really see any clear. I mean, you can always use the the previous lines and it seems like the albeit murky this 96 30 ish area is probably somewhere that where i would expect this to go up to that's a far move from where we are so i would think we'd probably spend more time balancing maybe in this 94 range if this caps our move off for now to underneath this 92 which is a pretty big area but as far as pulling back um because i know some of the software was not in trending with some people has been sort of fighting this. And I guess in a perfect world, I don't know, <laughs> maybe I'm talking out of my ass here, but it seems to me if the developers can implement, and I know not all their software needs to be in trending versus not trending, um, but if they can develop a way for it to automatically switch between or at least recognize the changes they're in, I think it's going to dramatically help um, any drawdowns take place on what I, what I call protracted moves like what we've seen. Um, with just the strength in the dollar in relation to most majors with the exception of the Canadian dollar. So, but right now I would have this in, um, 
you know, I should, should say, that I guess Monday morning quarterback is always easier to do, right? But I would probably have this in some sort of trending based until uh, otherwise. Um, Judson, do me a favor and uh, uh, just send me a DM, brother. I, I can explain that to you and tell if your broker's gaming against you or not. There's tons of videos in the, in the AP back office. I don't know how to give you a – it's almost like I need the Dewey Decimal System to access our, our library of, of, of stuff. Um, but it's out there. And if you don't feel like messing around with that, you can just Google how to know um, – if your broker's gaming against what's called B-booking against you, squat into Google. I know there's YouTube videos on it as well. And by the way, between the, the being with the right broker, understanding the difference between A and B, in communicating that with your team and making sure everybody's on board with that and or the Telegram channels or our calls, um, I would imagine would probably have reduced any drawdowns or people being disillusioned with the software by probably 70 or 80 <clears> percent, <throat> which is a big number. This question is, what is the plus in front of a specific pair for? Plus. I'm not sure what the question is. You're asking me, uh, let's take a look at the uh, back and gold here. I don't know what you mean by plus. This is just gold's pricing in US dollars, the spot rate of gold. All right, what else do I want to address? Forex Factory, for those who joined us late. Holidays, obviously, galore. Some celebrated on Monday. We celebrated it from a Good Friday standpoint on. Friday. Do note that Chair Powell speaking next week. Um, unemployment numbers from CAD. You know, and, and I'll tell you guys, with, with a lot of the strength in CAD in relation to most currencies, don't know that I'd be trading this on Friday. So probably would turn off, unless you're in drawdown, you really want to take a crack at swinging back into um, a positive stance with some of these CAD pairs, your software may be trading. I probably would have this off. What else did I want to address? I have so many bookmarks for stuff. It's just bananas here. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's probably it. Oil. Notice we've been pulling back. Can I dress uh, Swiss yen? Can I dress this yet? Still stuck in a tight range. We're not trending anywhere, really. Unless you're really into changing the trend, you know, per week. Euro AUD holding a real tight pattern. We're out of a trend down on this. We should be trading just almost the regular Martingale system, taking trades at the highs, pulling back to the lows. Probably been a pretty good little trader here if the right software's been running this the last week. Cool. <clears throat> Yeah, it's pretty much all I want to say. So we have just keep in mind macro. We've got two big cross currents coming, and one of them's stimulus checks globally are really creating pent up demand. And as countries continue to unlock from the rather draconian measures that they've been in, the demand for goods and services globally is going to spike and skyrocket. Um, be that as it may, and however degree that may play out. I can promise you it's probably most of the price in the markets already. You know, a lot of people seem to think that the prevailing winds of a market have, they're like, all of a sudden the market just figured this out. Now it's going to start to move that out. I mean, the market's priced this in um, because especially um, equity, certainly commodity, credit, or bond-based markets, and then Forex, um, many of these markets are 
what they, they're operating, what's called an efficient front, a frontier theory, meaning that they are, have the ability, since they are efficient, uh, to price in future news. Um, so it's the unknown, right? Like a prime minister coming out and mentioning something about Brexit, right? That's the unknown that, that can shock markets or a sudden change in policy from any central bank. Those post risks to the markets in terms of quick moves um, you know, kind of like the Canadian one I, that, you know, maybe that's a headwind I probably should have paid more attention to. And I could have been, you know, sounding from the hills on that in terms of um, the fact that this thing's just going to be trending up big in relation to most currencies. Right. Just know that um, if, in fact, you're not on some software that is in a trending mode, um, you might want to turn the pair off. Right. Just because typically a martingale tries to take a crack at. Um, something that's breaking, uh, something that's in a, in a tight range, just trading back and forth, right? The, tr the martingales historically do very well, which most EAs are based on a martingale-based system. You can Google it if you need more definition. Um, but the problem with it is, is that if the software doesn't have the ability to recognize that it's broken out from a particular point, right, and it starts to move up, um, you know, successively higher, breaking down from a particular point, the software, in my opinion, if I was a developer, I'd want it to be able to morph from sideways action to just trending one way or the other. I know that sounds like a very oversimple explanation, um, but that's kind of how I'm explaining it to my son, Evan, who we're trying to get into trading here. He's about to turn 13 um, and the kid starts, wants to start trading a lot of stuff. Um, but unlike most millennials, he doesn't want to open a, uh, an account at Robinhood and I fall prey to all the crap that they've done to their investors. He actually wants to start trading futures and currencies manually, which I think is the uh, is the best way to go to learn all this first. Um, and then certainly you can have some sort of automated or fully automated version of the EA trading it for you. All right. So that is it. I am off my soapbox. I'll wish everybody a great holiday weekend if you celebrate Easter. Happy Easter. Be kind to one another. And uh Get out and take the masks off. <laughs> Be well.